Gianna. I'm a Richmond-based private chef, and this summer I'm taking you on a tour of six local farmers market run by nonprofit RV Agriculture. Today we're in the heart of downtown Richmond at On the Square Market. You can escape the summer hours of the office and enjoy the breeze here. You can pick up your produce, you can get some sweet treats from local vendors, and you can even stop at the picnic tables to get some lunch. Now let's go check in with market manager Fraka, who runs the pork stork as well. I'm here with Fraka, who is the market manager for On The Square. She's also one of our vendors. What's your favorite part about running the On The Square market? Favorite part for me is learning to be the market manager. It gives me an active role in what happens here. So now let's hop over to your booth and get some pork to cook with. In addition to taking you on a tour of the farmer's market, I'm also bringing you along on a little challenge. Today, I have $25 with me and I'm going to be cooking a meal at home with just products from this farmer's market. And whenever I am recipe creating, I love to start with the meat, the protein, and go from there. While well, you didn't get to see this on camera, I did plan to go into this with bratwurst in mind. However, in talking to Fraka about it, she recommended that this is the season for bacon. It is BLT season after all. So I would love to get a pound of bacon. This would be cured bacon in slices, perfect for BLT. If you want to optimize your budget, you would take this bacon bits that would be $10 per pound. Let's try that out. I love that. Thank you for the recommendation. You're, you're very welcome. And here you all are seeing just why farmer's markets are so incredible compared to just going to, stop, to shop at the grocery store. You end up getting to talk directly to the farmers to get recommendations within your budget that still allow you to cook everything that you would desire. Oh, I see a little green farm over here. Let's go. My favorite part about farmer's markets is all of the colors. This is a massive amount of basil. I am so excited for this. Hi everyone, we are back at our next vendor stop with Little Green Farm from Spotsylvania, uh, Virginia. This is Alfredo. And he and his family run this farm. So originally I had planned to dive into a BLT, but I can't find lettuce. So. <laughs> Thinking on the fly, wanting to highlight these gorgeous tomatoes that are in season right now, I've decided to adapt and I'm going to be doing an open-faced bruschetta with bacon bits on top, which you'll see later. But for now, let's talk about these amazing tomatoes. I always get the, a lot of questions about what's the best taste in flavorful tomato, and that would have to be your, your turkey purples and your any sort of heirlooms because those are like, like I say, in your older style um, and your best taste and yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier and uh, Alfredo told me that these kinds of tomatoes end up being a little bit firmer and they can, but they ripen really fast. So you right. can leave them on the counter for a couple of days and you'll get a really sweet, flavorful tomato. If you really like the highest acidity of a tomato, then I would just say, you know, stick with your regular red one. But if you want something a little bit more flavorful, Definitely go with these heirloom tomatoes. She won't regret it. This is what we'll be cooking with later. <laughs> Here we are with Liz from Europa Crust. I'm gonna be picking out my bread to make my open face bruschetta with bacon bits from local farms, and I'm so excited to be here. Uh, so I'm gonna be making something with tomatoes, onions, basil, and bacon bits. Do okay. you have a recommendation for which of these loaves will be the best? For that? Yeah, I would recommend you go either with the rustic Italian or classic San Francisco sourdough down here on the end. Nice. Um, that really just depends on whether or not you want sourdough or plain bread to go with it. Okay, well, I am always a fan of a rustic Italian, so I would love to take this one. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, I'm so excited. This gorgeous, gorgeous loaf. Let's squeeze it now that it's mine. Can you hear that? <laughs> so amazing. I love bread. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me on this tour of On the Square Market. I've got my produce and I'm ready to cook. So come and join me in the kitchen. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. I have all of these beautiful ingredients that we just got at the market and I'm so excited to show you how we're going to use them today. As a reminder, we'll be making an open face bruschetta with some bacon ends. 
Um, so we've got our cured pork from Fraca, the market manager. We've got our gorgeous tomatoes from Little Green Farm, along with this amazing bunch of basil, which I have stored in some water in the fridge. This will help elongate the life of your basil, especially with a bunch this big. We probably won't get through all of it today, so it'll be helpful to have that extra shelf life. An onion, because alliums make everything a little tastier, and this gorgeous fresh made loaf of bread from Europa Crust. Now let's get started. Another great part about this recipe is because we are just putting it on top of a toast with some chopped tomatoes and onions. The pieces don't need to be the same size. Ideally, you'll want them to be about the same thickness just so that they cook evenly. But in terms of the shape, just not super important that they're identical because they'll still taste delicious. Similar to the bacon, I'm doing a really rough chop on these. So you can see there's really not a lot of symmetry. It takes the pressure off of it a little bit to just have that. My very favorite kitchen tip is cutting tomatoes with a serrated knife. I find it so much easier. Unlike a typical blade, when you push down, you can kind of feel the tomato buckle under that pressure. You really avoid that when you're working with a serrated knife and you get to retain all of that juicy goodness in the tomato. If you're someone who's impacted by those tears you get while you're cutting onions, my recommendation to you is to keep this little end intact when you're cutting. There's a lot of oils and uh, just everything that makes you cry is hidden in here. Take a closer look at what this looks like. I'm just gonna pop that in here. So here what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take all of my basil leaves, I'm gonna open them up and layer them on top of each other. And so this is going to make it super fast for me to cut everything. You'll see that this recipe will come together in just moments. So here I have this whole stack of basil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the outermost leaf and I'm going to start rolling it up just like that. And so now I have this little roll and I will just start slicing. And what you get here are these gorgeous, symmetric ribbons. And so this will just really help tie everything together in each bite that you have. So I am going to just pop these gorgeous basil ribbons right in the bowl with my tomatoes and onions. We're gonna take our olive oil. The seasoning for this is gonna be pretty simple. So we're just gonna drizzle in some olive oil. I've got my little tin of Malden salt. When it comes to the salt, you can absolutely refrain from using salt. You can utilize uh, a different kind of salt. Then we've just got a little bit of pepper. And the ribbons, the colors are all just gorgeous. The basil ribbons, the chunks of tomatoes, onions. It's all just such a delightful taste of summer. Now the best part, the taste test. I am a very big fan of bread, especially locally made bread. It always just feels so much better to eat and it stays fresh for longer. I love it. Let's take a look inside, see what we're working with. So it's got a really gorgeous crumb. You can see all the little air pockets that formed when it was baking. Makes for a really great slice of bread. And what I love about this is that it's the holes aren't massive, so this piece of toast is going to stay together really well. In order to cook this bacon in the most optimal way, I've had this pan heating up. And I am just going to grab this bring it on in. 
it smells delicious in here. I wish that you all were with me in my kitchen. So what I've got right here is a sizzle platter and a rack. And so this is where I will land my bacon once it's cooked. Similar to toasting bread in the oven with olive oil, popping it in this hot pan of bacon grease is gonna give it that really nice crust on the outside. Yeah, look at that. Oh, so beautiful. So we're gonna start with the bread. I'm just gonna take this mixture that we did together and scoop it on top. I personally love tomatoes, so I will not go skimpy on this one. I'm gonna really load it up. And traditionally you might see like a little sprinkle of salt on top. And what I love about this recipe is that we've got these gorgeous crunchy bacon bits that I'm just going to kind of squeeze on top and scatter throughout these bigger pieces. I'm going to break it in half. So here we have the final product, this open face bruschetta with bacon ends on top. Every single part of this came from the farmer's market. Can you believe it? I am so excited to take a bite. This is incredible. I am blown away from the fresh, acidic but sweet tomatoes. These onions are flavorful, but not like a kick, you know? And the basil shines through, the bacon is incredible. I think my favorite part about this bite is the bacon fat that I use to toast this bread in. It's absolutely impeccable. I love it. So simple, five ingredients, and so easy to make. Thank you so much for coming with me on this journey today. I had so much fun with this recipe challenge and I hope that you did too. Join me next time as we tour another one of Richmond's local farmers markets. See you soon.